Good morning and welcome to the Trinity Lutheran online worship today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We continue to celebrate the good news of the resurrection in this season of Easter. And we're so glad that you could take some time to come to this worship uh, experience again today. We're in our home today, and one of the reasons that we're doing that is that we want to stress that the church is not a box. It's not a building. It's not a physical location. The church is God's people. It's God's people who are united in Jesus Christ by the Spirit. And so even though, once again, we're having to be physically apart, we are united uh, by the Spirit, and we come and we gather together for this time of worship. You know, these videos aren't meant to be polished uh, presentations that you kind of sit back and watch, but they're a time for us as a congregation to come together. And so we're so glad that you can be with us today. There are lots of great uh, things that churches are doing out there on the internet these days and online and a lot of great, you know, worship vids. Um, some of you have said, you know, hey, my family members church is doing this or I got a friend's church who's doing that and we're just glad that you can get that spiritual sustenance from whatever source you can find. Um, one of the things we do on Sundays is we binge watch church services. You know my brother's church out in San Diego, her brother's church in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, some pastor friends of ours and just some other churches that we're checking out. And when my phone starts to die, we realize it's time we should probably stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of become our ritual on Sundays. And uh, it's important. It's an important way that we stay connected. Mm -hmm. We also need to stay connected as a congregation. And I just want to turn to Pastor Kari here. She's been doing some great things with the Zoom meeting platform. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can just share a little bit about that once again today. Well, when this all started, I was kind of at least sad, if not overwhelmed, that we weren't going to be able to get together in person. And I just thought if there was ever a time that we needed to connect to one another and hear God's word and pray for one another, it was going to be during this time. And so we've started uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at noon, kind of breaks up the day, um, Tuesday and Thursday with scripture and prayer and music, and then on Wednesday, it, there's more interaction that I call it coffee with Pastor Kari because I really enjoy coffee with people and I miss that and um, over Zoom is the best way we can have a little check-in with one another and I've really appreciated we usually have about 25 to 32 33 people and um, it reminds me that I'm part of a bo the body of Christ I'm not just over here by myself and so it's very meaningful for me. So I just want to extend another invitation. For those of you who are joining me, great, please continue. If you haven't tried it yet, please check it out or ask me questions if you're wondering if you'd like to. Yeah, so that's, that's a great way to connect and to kind of get that spiritual boost uh, throughout the week. You can see behind us on the TV screen, we've got our website up. That's a great place to go. To, to get connected to those. I know uh, for the Zoom meetings, you simply have to go there. Um, you'll click a link and it'll take you right to that meeting. So, and it's the same link, whether it's Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Yeah. There's just one link now. So an easy way to connect with that. Um, we also send out our link for this these services uh, to those who we have emails for, but you can also go to the website as well and get connected there. You can see that there's a service link right on the home page. So uh, just be using those resources. Uh, we want to stay connected as a congregation. Well, one of the things that God does is he takes the ordinary and he makes it holy. How does he make it holy? It's by God's presence. And so as we gather here today, hopefully you have a candle. You know, we're welcoming you into our home, but we're transforming that into our worship space today uh, and you know inviting God's holiness to kind of take over and so with that candle I want to read a verse of scripture as Pastor Kari is going to light that candle and invite you to do the same in your homes the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life 
of whom shall I be afraid? Let us gather now for this time of worship, and as we do that, we're going to take a moment to lift up the blessed of God and have you watch this creative video segment. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care for lives saved and lives lost for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar, and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless, and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. We do celebrate the blessed of God, and we do gather as God's blessed ones today. Let's join in singing our opening song together. Good morning, church. I thought we could maybe start our morning with a little bit of They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. While we can't gather, um, we still come together in this way, and we can't walk side by side and hold hands, um, but we are still the church. And so let's start this morning singing a little bit of the song.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this time to worship you. As we gather in our homes, we know that you are present with us and that your presence puts our feet on holy ground. Lord, help us to be gracious with ourselves. Lord, help us to be gracious with others as you offer an abundance of grace without end. Lord, breathe your spirit into us as we worship you fully. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Hey, Resurrection people, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my house, although in full disclosure, I can't really claim this kitchen as my own, as I am the one who is in here the least, but I benefit greatly. Yesterday I came home and the girls had been baking, and the smell of cookies, so good. Cookies the size of my face. I decided after about six that I had maybe had enough. But I love the sounds of when Pastor Tim is chopping the vegetables or the smell of uh, dinner being almost ready. So being in the kitchen is, uh, is great as a consumer. Well, love is shared through food. There's nourishment, nourishment for your body, but also it communicates, you know, love or I care about you or I value you. Sharing food is special and it's powerful, but a lack of food is terrifying. Last week we celebrated Easter and the earth literally shook, not to let Christ out of the tomb, but to let the witnesses in, to let the women into the tomb so they could then share the good news of the resurrection. The empty tomb rocked the world forever, especially our relationships, especially our relationships with others, like the poor, the hungry, those who are laid off, those who are sick, those who are in need. I heard recently, um, and I was heartbroken by the outbreak in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where nearly or around 600 people were infected with COVID-19 at one meat plant. Um, my brother and his wife are both pastors in Sioux Falls, and this will have a deadly impact on their community. We are resurrection people, and so we are in this pandemic. We are in this world together with all of the people of the world. Well, I want to invite you to get out your Bible. Uh, we're going to look at John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained strikes me that the disciples are locked in. Their world has been shaken up and they're afraid and they're locked inside. I can relate. I feel a bit like my world has been shaken up too and I find myself, I'm not locked inside, but I'm safer at home or sheltering in place. Jesus appears. He shows up where they are. And he says, peace be with you. As my father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathes on them, giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit. This past week, I was able to sit down with some recent volunteers at the Rhinelander Area Food Pantry. And I'd like to share with you the conversation 
that we had as we kind of talked about what that experience was like. Hey, well, I'm here on my Zoom call with some Trinity folks who were just at the food pantry this past Monday helping out to um, get food out to the community. And so I wanted to get them together to ask some questions and introduce themselves. So my first question is, um, why don't you give us your name and then how often you volunteer at the food pantry? And let's start over with Bridger and Sage. Um, my name is Sage Flory and this was mine and Bridger's first time volunteering. And I'm Bridger. <laughs> And Janine and Jeff. Um, my name is Janine Lynott and I'm I, Jeff Lynott. I volunteer at the food pantry every uh, month that, and it's the second Monday of every month. And I think I've, uh, I think I've volunteered three or four times in the past year. All right. And Carol. I am a site manager, so that means I am there every Monday of the month. So, and, and as such, I'm the one who says, okay, I think you can do this job. You will do that job. Mm. And, tell the, and, and also, if we have different products, we then talk about a little bit about that and how much should be given out. And how many years have you been doing that? Oh, um, Oh, I don't know. I don't know how long the pantry's been in existence. 15, 10, 15 years. And so I probably 10 at least. Okay. So you're familiar a little bit with how things might be going. <laughs> um, yeah. And it also helps to be the one who um, does a lot of the, the typing for Guy. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, um, Carol, this might be a good question for you then. How is it different now with uh, COVID-19? How is the food pantry having volunteers and clients? What's different about how, it's, how we serve there? Well, in the past, the clients were allowed to come into the building and then they would go through the line and they would get to choose the, the foods that they wanted. And now they're not allowed in the building, and it's just the volunteers that are there. And we are packing the boxes. Hopefully, we're packing things that they like and will use. Um, and then we weigh it. There are a couple of guys, and usually it's men, outside that are going to load the, the food. We take it out in the, the grocery cart. They load it into the cars. If... The trunk is available. Um, otherwise, the people have to load it into the back seat themselves. We don't want our customers nor our uh, workers to be that close to each other. And are you and, wearing some PPE? Oh, and oh yes, the mask and the gloves. It's just really fun. Um, one of the smile with your eyes. Smile <laughs> with your eyes. <laughs> One of the fellows came through, and Anne, who is the assistant to me, went out and talked to him, and he didn't recognize her. So when he saw me, he said, tell Anne, hi, is she here? He didn't even know that he had talked to her. So the masks yeah. are very nice. The only, I could, Sage wears a mask very nicely. Thank you. <laughs> So Janine and Jeff, did you feel comfortable serving at the pantry even in this health crisis? Um, I did, was a little apprehensive at first, I have to admit. Um, but I also feel that it's really important that we get that food distributed to uh, members of the community. Um, and actually once I got there, it, I. I really look forward to it. It was very nice to be with other um, staff members and working. It, it, it was very nice. The only thing that was very different, of course, was the people not coming through. And you get to know the clients coming in. You get to know their families and, and you, um, you know, you talk to them and, and check in with them. And um, so you, and I've worked there probably three years, I think. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you do get to know the people over time and that was hugely different. Yeah, you kind of miss that interaction, that update, probably when people need it maybe the most too. And when they bring their kids in too. I mean, we, we miss seeing the kids because we also yeah. have uh, food for the mind, which um, the kids all get books. Oh. Pass out books to them. And so we totally missed out having any kids on board this time too. Sure. So what job did they give you, Sage and Bridger? Uh, for me, I was working with Mrs. Lynott in the produce. So I picked out um, how much like bananas was my um, section. The family should get, so like based on the family number would be how many bananas I gave them. And then I also um, got bread for the family. So I put two loaves of bread in every cart and if Mrs. Lynott needed help, then I would help her with the, like, other produce and putting them in bags for the people. And Mrs. Lynott is Janine, and she was yeah. both Bridger <laughs> and Sage's kindergarten teacher. So she'll be Mrs. Lynott forever. Yeah. <laughs> Bridger, what did you get to do? Um, I was in charge of packing the meat products, and um, so I basically just put a certain amount of meat based on the size of the family into a bag and then um, put the cart full of, I was the last station, so by that point the cart was already full of food and then I put it on the scale and then we weighed it and then it was brought out to the family. So were you one of the carriers out to the family or you just were the last with the cart? Just the last with the cart. Last with the cart. So and how I did it? Was the carrier. I was the one who brought it outside and put it in the cars. Oh, you were that one. Yeah, I was one of them. There was probably Ron. Seems like that would take a lot of strength, but maybe I, maybe I don't know. The boxes get pretty heavy, actually. They, the big boxes, and there's a lot. Of That's what I would think. Um, how did it feel to serve? Let's start with Sage and Bridger. It's your first time, so how did it feel to be out there just in general? <laughs> I thought it was really eye-opening, um, especially when you have to kind of like ration the food. That's like kind of a hard word to use, but um, you see like the family size and you have to decide for them. I don't think it's always like this because they usually get to decide, but for now, like you have to decide um, family of one, three, how many bananas, avocados, apples, you think that they should get, but you really don't know what their situation is. So yeah, it's hard, but it's also really rewarding. I think um, just like thinking about they're going to get this whole cart of food and they get to like unpack it. Hopefully they like everything, you know, but it's cool and um, it felt really good. You know? Well, and you yeah. think about things that are essential right now. I would think making food available to people without food is pretty essential. Yeah. Bridger, how did it feel for you? Um, like Sage said, it was super fulfilling just knowing that you're like doing something to help out, especially given the current situation and knowing that certain volunteers that go every week um, can't or would risk um, their health if they did. So being yeah. younger and less at risk, um, it just felt like good to not only help the people who you're giving food to, but also um, the safety of people who maybe volunteer every month or more than that. And yeah, that's um, a good point that your service was not only to the clients, but to the volunteers who need to stay home. Janine, what brings you back? Three years. Um, I like volunteering. I like helping out. Um, and again, it's that personal connection with the people coming through. Mm -hmm. I like that and the kids. But mostly the satisfaction of knowing that I helped out. Mm -hmm. Jeff, how does she get you to come with her? <laughs> uh, well, I think all she had to do was ask. <laughs> And he's retired now. He oh, yeah, that's that's right. You're oh, yeah. here. I have a bit more time for things like yeah. that. It does. Uh, it, it warms my heart, I think, to be there and just be helping. 
and uh, you can see that there's real need for people that come there. Um, and virtually everyone that I've come in contact with is just so grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it nice just to get out of the house and see other humans? Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's less important for me. I'm, I uh, actually don't mind the, the solitude, but uh, can yeah. drag out into humanity every now and then is such a bad Sure. Thing. I didn't drag him. No, he, she didn't drag him. <laughs> No, no, I didn't think she did. Sage and Bridger, was that the first time you got out of the house in a while? In a while, yeah. In a while, yeah. <laughs> it got Besides, I mean, one. I'm sure you were outside of your house, but yeah. yeah. Um, was there enough food? I know Sage had said something about rationing the food. Was there enough to go around? Yes, there's a... Most of the time we have enough. We're finding that the grocery stores in town are becoming um, less generous with what they're giving. And I, it's probably because they are not getting as much as they were. And sure. so um, it's coming to the point now where we're, it's possible that we're going to have to start buying more food that normally has been donated. Mm -hmm. But did you feel like that you had to ration? I mean, it felt that way to you, Sage, but yeah. only because of the fact that we go by size of family, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, for the most part. But like um, me and Mrs. Lynott noticed there was kind of like less stuff in the produce section, we like just, which is probably we usually. We yeah. have lots and lots of bananas and apples and oranges. I don't think yeah. we had any apples or oranges at all this time. No. Did we oh, the apples and oranges were outside. Oh, they, they were. were. Oh, oh. They okay. were already bagged, and they were out there just to help us out, so we didn't have to I do all know. that. Okay. Well, that's good. What about, um, would you do it again? I guess I kind of know. Um, for the bot, for um, Carol and the Lynots, you guys have been doing it for a while. So Sage and Bridger, would you do it again? I would definitely do it again, um, especially in the future. Like if we got to meet the, well, I don't know if I would because I'm young, but like in the future for me. Yeah. Um, when you're 18, before. you can have. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would be cool, and I would enjoy that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree, and. When you think about it, it's like three hours of your time, one day a month. Like, obviously, you can choose to do more, but to start, that's such a small portion of your life. And, like, to have, like, some sort of impact feels really good, so I'd definitely do it again. Yeah. Well, there are opportunities on Mondays and Fridays and probably other days if uh, you are looking for an opportunity to help out, especially in this time when there is stress and strain on all families. Well, I want to thank Bridger and Sage Flory and Janine and Jeff Lynott and Carol Hansen for um, chatting with me on this Zoom call. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Well, it was really good to have a chance to hear from some recent volunteers for the Rhinelander Area Food Pantry. As people of faith, we are sent out and we go. And we go out to serve, to help people, but bigger than that, we go out to be bearers of the risen life of Christ. We want to share the risen life of Christ with the world, and especially right now when the needs are so great. We are a reflection of the life of Christ in the world. At Easter, we got to hear that great story. The women show up, and what do they do? They leave, and they tell the story about the tomb being empty, and they share their joy and excitement, and they share a story about resurrection and life. And in our reading today, Jesus shows up in that room when those men are afraid. He shows up. He says, peace be with you, and then he gives them his breath. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. This is 
the Great Commission for John. This is what Jesus says to go out into the world to share my risen life, to share the good news, to share all that I have given you. Share it with the world. So what does that look like right now? You know, we're talking about being sent out. So what does that look like in our context when we're told not to go out? So I have some ways in which we can share the life of Christ with the world. First, if you are not in a high risk, if you're not high risk, I want to invite you to, sh to serve at the Rhinelander Area Food Pantry. Trinity has two Mondays a month where we serve. I'm sure if there are other days of the week, they would accept your help as well. Contact me. I want you to contact me and then I will get you connected. We don't have sign up sheets. We don't have any of the things we're used to. So I just want to make it as simple as possible. Contact me and I will get you connected so that you can volunteer at the food pantry. Another way that you can serve in our community is to provide a meal at Frederick Place. Trinity provides a meal for the, on the second Tuesday of every month. And we've been doing this for a while. But we're, interest is kind of waning, and so we may evaluate whether we're going to continue to provide meals for Frederick Place. But now is not the time. Now is not the time to stop. We need to continue to provide that meal once a month, and it's just curbside drop-off, and you can either make it at home or you can provide it through a restaurant. Again, I want you to contact me. We are open. Um, the dates are open, May, June, July. As far as I can see, the dates are open, so if there is a month that would work for you, contact me, and I will communicate with you about how to do that. Now the third way is that we've all heard that there's this need for face masks. I mean, a few weeks ago, I didn't even know, know what PPE was, and now it's part of our normal, everyday conversations. There's a need for face masks here in Rhinelander. I've been contacting agencies like the food pantry in Frederick Place and the hospital. The hospital has a need for face masks for their non-medical staff, so people who are working but they're behind a desk. They can wear the homemade masks and they need them, as well as patients who are coming and need them to wear around town or need them when they're in at the hospital. There's a great need just even here in Rhinelander. So if you want to get out your sewing machine, my mother-in-law has been doing it. Uh, Pastor Tim has a cousin who's been making them and posting on Facebook, she's made a lot. We have a sewing machine, we got our kids, and so we're gonna bust that out and um, get a pattern and try and make some to help as well. Another, another exciting challenge we have is Lutheran World Relief. It's the same organization that our women make quilts for. They are they are starting a new challenge. So they are asking for 75,000 masks. That's a lot of masks. But it's a worldwide need. And so if you're willing to make a mask and bring those to Trinity, drop them off when you're going to the grocery store, ideally on a Tuesday or a Thursday, but before noon, or contact me, so that we can help provide masks so that we can help keep our community and the world safe. There, this is such a time of need. There are so many needs, and this is three ways that we can respond. And we can respond that then sharing the risen life of Christ. Easter is a starting point. We may be exhausted. We may be confused or grieving. We may be a lot of things. But no matter what we are, we are children of God. We are witnesses of the resurrection. And we are called and sent with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for our special music today, we're going to be doing a song called Nothing I Hold On To. Um, I think this song is pretty profound because uh, it talks about literally opening up your hands and climbing up the mountain and following God's word and saying, 
I don't know what I'm going to hold on to, but I'm going to follow what you say. And so I think sometimes when it comes to serving people and being a part of community, it can be scary to let go and be like, this is where I'm being called. But uh, Paula's in our worship this morning. But um, there's something so powerful in that. And it's good to remember that that's what Jesus does call us to do. So here is nothing I hold on to. take some time for prayer and uh, we know that uh, some of you like to pray in your own homes and and it's been a little bit tricky to figure that out so I guess what we're gonna we're gonna pray and if you still want more time to do that you can pause the video or you can take time after the service but uh, let's join together in a time of prayer now let us pray God uh, we pray for the church especially the church here in Rhineland or all the different congregations. We pray for your spirit to be working in and through them, that uh, they can be empowered with the risen life of Christ. We pray for the church in our country and around the world as we all continue to find new ways to stay engaged with one another and engaged with you continue to inspire us and uh, send us out into this world with so much need. God, we give you thanks for volunteers and agencies who are ready to serve those in need. We especially thank you for the Rhinelander Area Food Pantry, for the ways that they continue to serve and provide nourishment in this time of food insecurity. Lord, I give you thanks for Frederick Place, for the ministry that they have in our community as they continue to serve and inspire us to serve as well so that no one is left without a place to sleep. God, I pray that your spirit would be sent upon those members of our congregation who can sew, that they can start to make masks that are going to be provided for the health care needs in our community. Just uh, be with them and uh, help them to use the materials that they have to benefit others. 
We also thank you for the work that Lutheran World Relief is doing around the globe. We pray that once again that there can be members in our midst who know how to sew and can make masks to help meet that awesome uh, challenge and goal of 75,000 masks to be distributed around the globe. We pray for all who are sick or in need. We especially pray for John, for Lee and Carol, for Judy and Danny, Michael, Janet, Emily and Jim. And Lord, we pray for all who are grieving. There's so much loss right now. But we especially pray for the family of Jean Copenhaver and the family of Joe Scrip Scripsma. God, there are so many needs that we have at this time and we lift them up to you knowing that you hear them. We also ask you to watch over us and care for us, even those, those uh, petitions that, that we lift up in our homes and, and those ones that we lift up silently in our hearts. May you hear them and answer them according to your good purposes. All this we pray in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord watch over you and keep you. May God's Spirit be with you and send you out to serve in whatever ways in which the Spirit empowers you to serve. And may we stay united together as God's people and remember that we are the church together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May you have a blessed week. Let's go out singing together. Be good to yourselves. Let's go out singing. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. <laughs>